Ah, oh, good morning. It's Sunday, the 1st of May. It's the 1st of May. It's 10 o'clock. Our guests in the studio are half the league of gentlemen, Reese Shearsmith and Steve Pemberton. There they are. <laughs> and the man who can teach... And you can take a trip to Psychoville on Thursday at 10 on BBC Two and BBC HD. But even better than that, we have the creators and stars with us here in the studio, Rhys Shearsmith and Steve Pemberton. Hi, welcome to the show. Hi, guys. Uh, b- before we get stuck into uh, Psychoville, um, how was the show last night? Because you're, you're in Betty, oh, Betty Blue Eyes I at am, the moment, yes. aren't you? With... With Sarah Lancashire, with yes. Sarah Lancashire. Yeah. Oh, I did two and yesterday, so I'm two. tired. Did two? Called Do a matinee. Saturday. Saturday matinee, yeah. yeah. But what, so, yeah, it's going great. It's when really, really Sarah came yeah. on, she wouldn't reveal anything about the pig. Uh, yeah, we were she told said not we're to not really allowed to tell you. She's not allowed to tell us anything. It's an anat- animatronic pig. Now we can it? reveal it's not a real pig, yeah. Animatronic pig. For anyone who doesn't know what we're talking about, it's based Robot on. Robot pig. Uh, yeah, but it's based <laughs> on a private oh, the function. show, yes. <laughs> and so it's about. Um, in the world, uh, World War Two, was it just? Yeah, uh, it's after the war, 1947. Rations, you get a pig Rationing. and you want to eat it. Yeah. And they have an animatronic pig. Yeah, there was talk of a real pig, but we thought it would terrify the audience. It's had great and reviews, hasn't it? It's had though, great it's reviews, yeah, it couldn't so have gone well. better, yeah. Because you never know what, you know, with a new thing, you never know how it's going to turn out, but it's, uh, it's gone really well, yeah. Is great. the pig the star of the show? Um, <laughs> no, I am. <laughs> 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 well, I mean, when it comes on, everyone's looking at the pig, so it doesn't really matter what me and Sarah and the rest of the cast are doing once it's on. Because it is kind of quite mesmerising just to look at it. Because it's so kind of real. Cameron McIntosh described it as like a real pig with fairy dust on it. Because it's kind of like real but not real in a kind of Disney way. Does it fart? <laughs> yes. <laughs> does, it, does, it, does, it, does it move during the thing? How's it? Uh, well, it, there's a man under the stage that operates it, you know. Um, he's, he's got a little monitor and he, can, he gives it kind of life and expression. So I went to watch Wizard of Oz with my kids lots so long ago and the, right. yeah, the, the little dog in it. And uh, it's funny, every time the dog comes on stage, doesn't matter what the actor's doing, I'm just going, yeah, oh, it's a dog, it's a dog, yeah. he's walking. And there's that weird, <laughs> yeah. you have that strange thing of it, you know it's, no one's really con- in control of it, so it <laughs> might do anything and that's what's quite <laughs> scary well, about it. That's right, so two shows yesterday. Yeah, yes, yeah, um, it is full on for an old man like me. How, how long but, are you in uh, it for? Till October. I a know. long run. Yeah. So that's quite a really long run. Yeah. Mm. Fresh every night. Fresh every night. Yeah. Yeah. Teeth and smiles. <laughs> exactly <laughs> that. Yeah. That's good. And Benny Dorm, Steve, are you well, so where are I, when did you film that? Is there enough series? What's going on? Uh, yes, I think that's been announced. It's uh, series five. Series five. Yeah. I'm such a big fan. I love oh, it. It's one of those you. programs once you start watching, you just find yourself giggling. Yeah, I think it's nice because it's on in the sort of, you know, in February and, and January yeah. when we're so depressed and yeah. miserable and you just watch something with a bit of sun in it. It's How long do you guys go over there and film that for? I, I always think it must be nice to have a job months. that's in the sun. Yeah, yeah, we go from September to December. And you obviously and all get on well and just have a Yeah, we have last. a real laugh, yeah, yeah, we hit the I town. I like the Silla Black yeah. one. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Consuela! <laughs> yeah, she was good fun, actually. She was really good fun. And we had Banana Rama, yeah. and we had uh, Melvin Hayes. And they always, they always come up with sort of a lot of uh, guest stars. And a lot of people from my childhood, people like um, Brian Murphy, who played George and Georgia Mildred and, yeah. and Melvin and Scylla. So Great it's like show. you're reliving your youth yeah. and acting alongside them. Georgia Mildred show. movie on the other day. It was really bizarre, which I'd never seen, which was all about... Um, I don't know, there was sort of crimes going on. And th- anyway, yeah. uh, let's talk about Psychoville instead. Um, so, uh, second series now. Um, yes. Can you um, re- briefly give a... <laughs> how would you do it? Give a description <laughs> of what happened in the first one. Kind of weird stuff which comes out of your head again. Um, what was the summary of what's happened so far? Well, we... Um, the end of the first series, nearly all... It appears all the characters have been killed in this mm. blast and an explosion. And we kind of wrote in a, la- a last-minute... <laughs> get out if we got a second series that we would be able to launch into a new story. So you didn't know whether you had No, the... you never know, yeah. Because ah, right, okay. uh, it was going to go out mm. and then they would right. decide. So we just thought, well, we'll have to dare to think we will get a second series, not just close the book on it. So we wrote this thing of a locket that um, Imelda Staunton's character was after, coming in at the last minute asking all the our characters who's got this locket. And we kind of had an idea what it meant, but we weren't quite sure. But we thought, well, if we get a second series, that will be the thrust of what it's going to be. And so in our second series now, it, it starts a week after the explosion. There's a funeral for some of the characters that have died. And Imelda Staunton, who's our new kind of baddie, is after this locket for mysterious purposes. 
But they do that on a lot of big American shows like 24 and Lost and, and stuff like that. They, they have a mid-season point and they don't know if they're going to carry on and yeah. re recommission. So. It must be quite hard to write on the basis of not really knowing when you're writing. It, it is, but it's also very freeing because literally anything can happen and that's, what, that's where we get a lot of our inspiration yeah. from is, is yeah. the fact that these characters could go in any direction and uh, wh when people watch the, the first episode, I think they'll be quite surprised by what yeah. happens. And, and having that freedom and, uh, you know, not exactly having an end point in mind allows you to take the story on a, on a real sort of you, narrative. You are well known for your characters. Yeah. Uh, when, 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 League of Gentlemen as well. When yeah. you come up with a character, do you, do you put it to everyone and say, here's our character, what do you think? Or how, do, how, does, how does the evolution of a character happen? Well, usually it's, the, it's not an idea for an initial joke of a situation. So it's like a clown that's not very nice to the children or a restart officer that's not nice to the unemployed. And then... And, and people not being nice to people. <laughs> yeah, that's the theme. <laughs> it seems the to be the theme. It's quite dark, your minds, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it is. I mean, it always turns out that way. We never willfully think, what can we do that's horrible or dark? It's just that's what makes us laugh. Right. So I think we have that, that's our sense of humour, isn't it? Can, can we have a little reminder for people who, well, I'm not sure everyone knows your characters, but here are some of the characters. Ah, good. From Liga, gentlemen. To England. Uh, my name is Terlip, and I may enjoy you to this exchange visit to the lovely town of Reiston Vesey. What's all this shouting? We'll have no trouble here. <laughs> They're strangers. Not local. He wears a crown and builds a new road. Um, just a sec. Where do you think you're going? Interview. You're going nowhere, Buster. Sit down. Have you seen this? My sister got it out. Richard I I I. <laughs> What's it about? It's about two hours. <laughs> Hello, Dave. I'm sorry? Is that Dave? Oh, no, I think you've got the wrong house. OK, is Dave there? Uh, no, there's no one called Dave here. OK. <laughs> <laughs> And that leads me on, actually, to quite a nice email from Bryony Jameson. Um, where do you find your inspiration and all the characters in A League of Gentlemen and Psychoville? Well, where do we find them? Are they based, <laughs> are they based <laughs> on real people? Sometimes, sometimes yeah. we've heard a conversation or there's a, we've seen a funny situation and we thought that, that could be, if, we, if that escalates out of control, that could be a funny scene. Mm. You know? And other times it's just we have the idea for the actual... That it has to fit in the story, doesn't it? It's yeah, you take, you take lots of different things and, and people you've met and, and, and things you've seen on you know, reality television yeah. as well. That's yeah. quite yeah. good for us to watch. There's been about 60 characters, isn't there? I mean, it's a yeah, lot we have of characters by the end of the year. Mm. How many did we play by the end of League of Gentlemen? In League of played? Gentlemen, we played about 30 each. Yeah. In Psychoville, we played about four or five each. So we've kept it. But, yeah. but even then, what you don't want to do is have people say, oh, that's just so and so from League of Gentlemen. I know, of course. So we've worked very hard to make the Psychoville characters a separate lot from the League of Gentlemen ones. Yeah. So. Which is why, hard. Why, why, why is everything so dark in here? Yeah. <laughs> and how come you share the love of it together? Is it, is it something you... Yeah, it's funny that we all found each other because we all do have very similar senses of humour. I mean, we all have a collective memory of one bonfire night in 1976, not going out and looking at the fireworks, but staying in and watching Carry On Screaming. Right. And that was me, Jeremy, Mark and Steve, all scattered throughout the north of England doing that on that <laughs> particular night in 1976. So we have a very collective... But we are very different as well, I think that's what kind of makes it work, because we've got very silly... There's very silly things in our show as well, very traditional comedy. And then, but then we pepper it with this kind of dark stuff as well. And we're but very normal. We've got kids, you know, both got kids and we have normal family lives. And so we get <laughs> it all out in our it? work. <laughs> yes, yeah, we make them it? sit them down. Right. No, no. Well, Reese's daughter was You're in the first normal, series. Guys. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> we are, we are normal. <laughs> the stuff that I'm watching is not normal. Would you ever, someone said, is, would you ever tour Psychoville? Because you, you, you toured League of Gentlemen. Could you ever tour that? I mean, it's a bit It would be weird. hard because only two of us. isn't it? Yeah. We, yeah. we, we've started we'd, talking about it. Yeah, we? I think if, if, if this second series kind of builds on the first and if it felt there was a momentum there, uh, we, we may well do that, yeah. yeah you just, but uh, it, it's very hard work, as Reese said, you've got all the costumes have Velcro down the back and you literally run off stage and back on again. It's like it's There's only two of us. <laughs> <laughs> All right, OK. Uh, you're going to uh, hang around, uh, aren't you, and, uh, and cook we are with cooking. us. Uh, and, and uh, Steve, you're going to ha help us uh, look at some of the latest gadgets for some things for the weekend. We've got um, uh, a cat toilet. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. A mechanical cat toilet. OK. Have <laughs> you got a real cat? We haven't got a real cat, okay. but we've got, a, we've got um, marshmallows, which um, are pretending to be cat poops. Nice. Um, if you've got some ideas for the new show yeah. after this show. <laughs> If you go right. so in a hot tray, it means it will make the paper crisp okay. up as well. Okay, so right. what we're going to do to serve this, 
you scoop this onto there. Lovely. And then... Fishing paper, guys. Yeah. Fancy yeah. some of that. And then fishing simply... Paper. Could you do it in newspaper? Do you know what that you could? Say, you absolutely could. Traditional fishing paper. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could. At the end of the day, newspapers are great into cooking on the barbie as well. If you wet the newspaper, mm. things on the barbie, it's a great way of kind of cooking stuff as well. What was that, cooked in salmon? Did I miss uh, that? Lemon tree, please. olive oil. That's lemon always in yeah. yeah. the Please have a go. go. For it. Lovely. So you've got, underneath, you've got all the fennel, you've got the tomato, a little bit of olive oil, chilli on, on the tender stem. Mm. The broccoli looks lovely. Mm. Nice. What do we That's um, delicious. Really nice. What are we mm. making for uh, Ooh, a pop. We're making a, a lemon Victoria sponge with strawberries. Mm. A nice, nice flavour. Nice oh, and nice. nice. That is absolutely delicious. Okay. And it is. Very quick to make. Yeah. Mm. That's delicious. Oh, mm. Okay. Yeah. Right, that will be on our website, bbc.co.uk slash something for the weekend. <laughs> uh, don't forget to email in or tweet any suggestions for the boys from Psychoville. Uh, and for Gareth Malone to bbc.co.uk slash something for the weekend or tweet SFTW. OK, preview time. Stuart Lee so once good, was on a comedy so tandem with Richard Herring, but now he is driving a brand-new comedy vehicle.